Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, breakthroughs. The next, the next uh, a few slides here will be on breakthroughs. In other words, some things that, that, that all of a sudden you know something new that you didn't before and it's useful. Okay, that's a, that's a breakthrough. It's a key factor that makes us different than the animals. You don't define an animal of thinking about the future and having a better way of life by something that he invents. So in, in a way, I think it's very closely tied to, in, uh, to intelligence. In other words, you can look at a human as being someone who does agriculture, he feeds himself, he feeds his family, he survives, and he goes through not thinking about the next generation or the next hundred years or the next thousand years being any different. Well, humans aren't like that. They have the capability of dramatically changing the quality of their life within one lifetime. So we are driven by that because of the desire to see something that's better that we did ourselves or that our neighbor did that helps our way of life and all of a sudden it, within a generation you can see a big improvement. A big improvement in life expectancy, a big improvement with, you know, all, anything you want to define you can use technology to have a big improvement in a heartbeat. And that's, that's why that, I think that's the most important difference in our unique uh, thing called intelligence. I think that the inspiration that drives someone to later be the one that has the breakthrough, I think it happens very early as a child. What he sees when he's age 3 to 14, I think is what drives him to, as an adult, to be the creative one, the one to have courage to try new things and the one that's likely to have the breakthrough. Uh, okay, factors that drive creative. Uh, you, creativity doesn't just happen. It usually happens when uh, things are not so good. You have breakthroughs when you're trying to survive. You have breakthroughs when you have a business survival problem. We had enormous break. We America had enormous breakthroughs because of this embarrassment of a perceived defeat. What I'm talking about here in the late 50s and early 60s, America got beat by the Russians, and it was very obvious to the world that they had the first Earth satellite. <coughs> Even though we felt, well, we're as good as them or we're better than them technically, it was very obvious to the world that they had the first man in space even though we thought, well, we can do that too, we got beat. And it's probably good that America, good for Americans, that they did get beat. Okay? Uh, because those defeats is what drove us to have the courage to lead to breakthroughs. You have breakthroughs because of enjoyment. In other words, you have a breakthrough to create fun as much as you have a, a breakthrough to create survival. Well, when do they occur? I think breakthroughs occur not when everybody's doing fine and when, you're, when your uh, priority is to make everyone equally happy. You don't have breakthroughs then. That's monotony and that can lead uh, to monotony and it, and it can lead even to your ability to survive. But you have breakthroughs either during or after crises when you have really bad times. We're creative when we're threatened. An example, the 80s and 90s you would have thought would be a real good time for America to go ahead, okay, now let's go to Mars. It seemed reasonable. Uh, certainly it's not as hard to go to Mars in the 80s or 90s uh, in terms of what we have to learn that's basically new compared to the challenge that we had in the 60s to go to the moon when we knew very little. We went to the moon in the 60s at a time when we had the, the highest fear period of the Cold War, when people were building bomb shelters and we were all afraid that we're all going to die. And, and we had the, the Bay of Pigs, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Vietnam War. We had political murders, domestic range. 
everything that was going on in America that made the news that you probably heard about over here was bad, except for one thing, the Apollo program. That saved our 1960s. Why would you pick a time period when you're so engrossed with solving bad things to let's go to the moon, right? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, how? I believe that confidence in nonsense is a major factor, and the reason is, think of the most important breakthrough that you can think of. Go back before it was recognized as a breakthrough, and the populace normally would consider, well, that's nonsense. That's nonsensical. And all of a sudden, when it really is recognized as a true breakthrough, then of course, oh yeah, that's really cool. But what people forget is it's nonsense before. Well, what that means, that's why the weird folk have the breakthroughs, because they have confidence in nonsense. If it's nonsensical and you say, well, I'm not going to try to do that, it didn't make sense, you're not going to have a breakthrough. The guy who is silly enough to think that, hey, I'll try that even though it's nonsense, He's the guy that's going to have the breakthrough. So, uh, try things that you don't think will work. If you think they'll work, you're not doing research anyway. Okay, you can't buy breakthroughs by shoveling large amounts of money to it. And my best example of that is the space station, excuse me, the space shuttle, the reason it was sold to the Congress as a justification to spend all of this money was that, well, if we build this reusable system, it'll lower the cost of sending things to space. Hey, if we don't have to throw something away, it'll be cheaper, and therefore we can do it for one-tenth of the cost, so we have to spend all this money. So that was the goal, was to have something low cost. Now what we ended up with something, it was a phenomenal system, of course. We're still flying it, we'll be flying it another couple of years. Uh, it's a phenomenal complex system. In fact, the space shuttle really is a space station that you deorbit after it's there for a couple of weeks. It has had all the elements of a space station but you deorbit it and then you spend with thousands of people working on it for months and then you launch it again. It's that complex of a system and because it's very complex, it costs about 10 times as much to put payloads in orbit as the old expendables. So something that had a goal of one-tenth and ends up with 10 times, that's 100 times off. You know, nobody went to jail over that. But we didn't get the goal, even though we spent a lot of money. They, breakthroughs occur, I believe, because of the working environment. So you, going out into the industry as entrepreneurs, I'm encouraging you to build a working environment which will breed uh, breakthroughs. And I'll get to that sometime. Let's talk about the difference between productivity and creativity. Uh, a lot of people use this term uh, together, it's called research and development. Have you ever seen that where, where you say, well, what do you do? Oh, I'm in research and development. Uh, have you ever asked the question, which? They're totally different. What's development? Development is something you know you can do, and you do engineering, and you build it, and maybe you tweak it a little bit, but you know you can do it. That's development. Research is when you try something that you don't know you can do. I think the best definition of research is that half of the people have to be convinced at first, excuse me, half of the people are convinced at first that what you're trying to do is impossible. And half of the people say, mm, maybe we can do that. 